Hey guys, sorry for the four day wait um, before I posted another video. I was uh, a little drunk on turkey meat and a little fatigued on it as well and I didn't really feel like posting a video because I was lethargic and family time and whatnot. But uh, when I left off, I think I said I was going to talk about Abysmal Dawn or Spawn of Possession next, but I'm going to talk to you about something even better, uh, Rage Against the Machine, the Battle of Los Angeles. Uh, they're not, everyone knows they're not like heavy, heavy, but they are considered rap metal. <clears throat> and uh, just to touch base on Rage Against the Machine a little bit. Uh, Rage Against the Machine, also known as Radom, is an American rap metal band from Los Angeles, California, formed in 1991. The group consists of rapper slash vocalist Zach De La Rocha, bassist and backing vocalist Tim Comerford, Comerford uh, guitarist Tom Morello, and drummer Brad Wilk. They draw inspiration from early heavy, heavy metal instru instrumentation as well as rap, rap acts as Africa. Bombata, Public Enemy, The Beastie Boys, and Dutch crossover band Urban Dance Squad. Rage Against the Machine is best known for its leftist political views, which are expressed in many ways of its songs. As of 2010, they have sold over 16 million records worldwide. In 1992, the band released its self-titled debut album, which became a commercial and critical success, leading to a slot in the 1993 Lollapalooza Festival. In uh, 2003, the album was ranked number 368 on Rolling Stones magazine's list of the top 500 best uh, or greatest albums, I should say, of all time. The band did not release a follow-up record until 1996 called Evil Empire, which basically only has Bulls on Parade on it. Uh, the band's third album, The Battle of Los Angeles, followed in uh, 1999 and 2003. The album was ranked number 426 on the same list during their initial nine-year run they became one of the most popular and influential bands in music history according to vocalist journals colin devinish um, they were also ranked number 33 on vh1's 100 greatest artists of hard rock the band had a large influence on the new metal genre Wow, I just got lost. On the new metal genre, which emerged during the late 1990s, and new metal, new metal is pretty gay, if you ask me. Uh, uh, in 2000, the band released the cover album Renegades. Uh, the same year, growing tensions over the directions of the band prompted uh, De La Roche to quit, leading to the band's breakup. Uh, De La Roche started a new low-profile career, while the rest of the band formed the, the rock supergroup Audio Slave, Chris Cornell from Audio, Chris Cornell from Audio, uh, not Audio Slave, Chris Cornell from Soundgarden, uh, then former frontman, yeah, there we go, uh, Audio Slave went on to record three albums before disbanding in 2007, the same year, Rage Against Machine announced a reunion and performed together for the first time in seven years at the Chilchella Valley Music and Arts Festival in April 2007. The band continued to perform at more live venues and festivals around the world, but currently have no plans to record new material. In 1991, guitarist Tom Morello left, the, left his band, Lock Up. Oh, this is back to the early years. Looking to start another band, he was in the club in, in LA when he heard Zach Rocha was freestyle rapping. Uh, Tom Morello was impressed, people said. Um, by De La Roche's lyric books and asked him to be a rapper in his band. Morello drafted drummer Brad Wilk in Gr of Greta, who had previously auditioned for Lockup, while De La Roche convinced his childhood friend Tom Comerford to join the, as bassist. The newly christened Rages Machine named, named themselves after a song uh, Zach De La Roche had written for the former popular underground hardcore punk band Inside Out also to be the title of the unrecorded Inside Inside Out full-length album. Uh, Kent McClard, with whom Inside Out was associated, had coined the phrase of Machine in a 1989 article in his Zine No Answers. Shortly after forming, they gave their first public performance in Orange County, California, where a friend gave 
where a friend of Comerford's was holding a house party. The blueprint for the group's major label debut album, Demo Tape, Rage's Machine, was laid on a 12 song self released cassette, the cover image of which was a stock market was the stock market with a triple match taped to the inlay card. Not all twelve songs made it to the final album. Two were eventually included as B sides, which the remaining three songs never seeing an official release. Several record labels labels uh, expressed interest and the band eventually signed with Epic Records. Murillo said Epic agreed to everything we asked and they followed through. We never saw conflict as long as we maintained creative control. The band's debut album, Major's Machine, reached triple platinum status, driven by heavy radio play of the song Killing a Name, a heavy driven track featuring only eight lines of lyrics. The Fuck You version, which contains 17 iterations of the word fuck, was once accidentally played on a BBC radio uh, and one top 40 single show on February 21st, 1993. That would be hilarious to listen <laughs> to that on the radio, the amount of shit they, they got, got in for doing that. The album's cover featured uh, Malcolm Brown's Paul Tizer prize winning photograph of Thick. Oh, I can't even read this shit. Thick Quang Duck, a Vietnamese Buddhist monk, burning himself to death in Sajin in 1963 in protest of the murder of Buddhists by the U.S. backed Prime Minister Nang. De, De Diem's regime. The album was produced by Gareth Richardson to promote the album. The band went on tour playing at Lollapalooza in 1993 as support for suicidal tendencies in Europe. In 2003, the album was ranked 368 on Rolling Stone's list of 500 greatest albums of all time. In 1999, what ranges Rage Machine played at the infamous Woodstock 99 concert. The following release, The Battle of Los Angeles, was debuted at, num- at number one in 1999, selling 450,000 co- copies in the first week and then going double platinum. Uh, that same year, the song Wake Up was featured on the soundtrack of the film The Matrix, which makes the movie ten times better. Everyone loves a great song during the credits of an awesome movie to satisfy you. And the track Calm Like a Bomb was later featured in the film sequel, 2003, uh, The Matrix Reloaded. In 2000, the, the band planned, this, planned to support the Beastie Boys on the Rhyme and Rhythm Tour. However, the tour was canceled when Beastie Boys drummer Mike D suffered a serious injury. Uh, I don't know what, what it was, but in 2003, the Battle of Los Angeles was ranked number 426 on Rolling Stone's list of the top 500 greatest albums of all time. Personally, I like the Battle of Los Angeles better than their self-titled album because it has songs such as Testify, Gorilla Radio, Calm Like a Bomb, Mike Check, Sleep Now on the Fire, Born as Ghost, etc., etc., etc. You know what I'm getting at. Uh, the, the whole album is great. This video is already getting long enough, so if you guys enjoyed it, please uh, subscribe. And that's not even the thumbs. There, there we go. Or the, the thumbs, the horns.